Hello, in this video, we are going to finalize Swing Attention class, and by the end of this video, we should be able to run the entire code for the first time. Okay, let's start. So in the paper, we saw that we are gonna multiply the Q uh, times K transpose, and then uh, divide it by the square root of uh, D. We already defined this as a scale, so we have this, and now we are gonna do this one, okay? And for doing the dot product, we are going to use this function. And this function is going to get two inputs. The first one is Q and the second one is K. Let's look at the dimension of the Q. So the Q is B uh, for the batch size, which is one. Then we have H. H is number of heads for the first stage is three. Then we have W. W is going to be 64. It means that how many windows we have. Then we have i, which is 49, and then we have d, which is 32. That is basically shown here. This is 1, 3, 64, 49, 32. Then we have another input, which is k, and this is the dimension of the k. So it is again b, h, w, j, d, and j here is again 49. Okay? And the output should be in this shape. So it's going to be again. Uh, batch size, number of heads, number of windows, and then i and j. For us, i and j, both of them are going to be 49. So this is the dimension of output. Basically, the dot product is based on the last uh, dimension of the vectors. So when we have, for example, the input, uh, this one, so the last dimension is d, 32, and the second input is also this one, the last dimension is D. So when we do the dot product between these two matrices, so the output is gonna be uh, this one, okay? Okay, now we have this Q times K transpose, and we have this uh, scale also. What we need to add now is this one, which is our positional embedding. Let's do that. Okay, now we add our positional embedding and we know that the position of embedding that we created here is a 49 by 49 in size, and we add that to our dots. Okay, let's look at the one numerical example here. Imagine that I have a tensor like this, which is a random number. So you could say, for example, we have a batch size one, and then a head is one, and then we have um, two windows, and each window is five by five, okay? It's gonna be a tensor like this, okay? And then let's say I have a positional embedding that is uh, gonna be all of them values as ones, and the shape of that is gonna be five by five. So that's gonna be like this. And now I'm gonna just add these two things together. So what happens? So for each one of the elements, now I'm adding one. So it means that my positional embedding it's not only be on one window, it's gonna be applied on all of the windows. So here you could see I have two windows. This is my first window, which is five by five, and this is my second window. And when I add the position on embedding, position on embedding is gonna act on each one of them. That is exactly what we are doing here. So when I'm adding this 49 by 49 matrix, to my dots is gonna act on all of the windows. And I have, for example, in the first stage, I have 64 windows. My positional embedding is gonna be added on each one of them, okay? Okay, now we are done with adding this uh, B. So we have the positional embedding, but we need to add one more thing which is not shown in this formula, and that is our masking. We said that for the last row windows and last column windows, we have that uh, challenge uh, for when we have shifted windows. So we have to uh, add one more element here. Okay, let's do that. Okay, now if a uh, window is shifted, if shifted is true, uh, we know that we have upper lower mask and left right mask and the size of each one of them is 49 by 49. And now we are gonna add that to only the windows in the last row and windows in the last column. So. Uh, for the last row, we do this one. We are gonna have upper lower mask. And for the last columns, we are gonna do this one. Now we only consider the windows in the last rows. For example, in the first stage, 
only the windows in the last row are affected. And for doing that, we use this line. So first dimension is batch size, the second one is the head, and the third one is the related to the windows, number of windows. We use this code, and by doing that, we should be able to only uh, mask the last uh, row windows, okay? In a similar fashion, we want to mask only the last column windows. And for doing that, we do this one. The first one is batch size, the second one is the number of heads, and then we are starting from the NW uh, underline W minus one, which is uh, seven for us because NWW is uh, eight, so minus one is seven. So now we are starting at index seven. So this one is index zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we start at this window. For getting to the next one, I just need to jump eight more. So if I jump eight more in the index, I'm gonna be here, okay? And that is the reason that we have this jump here, okay? So using this line of code, we should be able to only mask the last column windows. And that is exactly what we are gonna do that here. Also, let's look at a numerical example. Um, here we have a tensor uh, where the batch size is one, head is one, I have two windows, and uh, my matrix is five by five. When we print that, we get this one, okay? And my mask is gonna be also five by five, which is this one. Let's say I'm just gonna apply that in this specific example on the second window. So for doing that, uh, the first dimension is a batch size, the second one is number of heads, and the third one is related to the window. And I'm just gonna say that I want the uh, index one window and I want that one be modified by adding a mask and if I do that and look at the results you can see that only the second window is affected in the previous example when we were trying to add positional embedding we added positional embedding to all of the windows but here we add mask only to the windows in the last row or last column and that is the difference, okay? Okay, now we have everything that we need as the input to the softmax function. So we are gonna have uh, dots that we created here. Uh, we added position and embedding, and if we need to mask that, we added masks to that. And now that is ready, and we apply softmax function on that, and we get the attention, and the output size is gonna be this. So it's gonna be identical as the size of the input. Okay, now we have our softmax function. We just need to multiply that to our value. And we are gonna use this line to multiply the output of the softmax to the value, okay? So V is our value, and attention is what we have here as the output of the softmax. Let's look at the attention shape here. Uh, this is our attention shape. Uh, so batch size is one. Number of heads, we know that, for example, is three for the first stage. Then we have W, the W is number of windows, which is 64 in the first stage, and I and J, which both of them are 49 and 49. And value shape is this one, where B is batch size, H is number of heads, W is the number of windows, and then J is 49, and D is 32. If you remember when we created Q, uh, K, and V here, each one of them had this dimension. For example, for the first stage, it was 1, 3, 64, 49, 32, okay? And the output shape is gonna be this one. Again, batch size, head, number of windows, I is 49, and D is 32. Okay, now we have our output as the result of the softmax multiplication to value. And now we are gonna rearrange output again to the original tensor shape that we have for the input to each uh, swing transfer plot. So for doing that, uh, we are gonna put output as the input to this rearrange function. And let's look at the input shape. For example, for the stage one, shape of the input is this one. We have batch size, number of heads is three. We have 64 number of windows, and then we have uh, 49 uh, is going to be the height and width for each window size. And then D is the number of 
uh, embedding size, which is 32. And the output shape is going to be this one, uh, which is batch size 1. This one is going to be uh, the number of window in edge direction times the uh, size in the edge direction, which is 8 times 7 is 56. For this one is also again 8 times 7, 56. And head is going to be 3. 3 times D, which is 32, is going to be 96. So for the first stage, we get 1, 56, 56, 96. Now we have everything back to the original uh, shape that we have for the tensor. After doing that, we are going to use our two output layer. If you remember, we created one layer in our initialization here. The input size, inner dimension is number of channels. The output size is also dimension or for us is equal to the number of channels. So it's going to be exact same. And we are going to use this to output here. And the output of that is not going to change our uh, tensor shape. And if shifted is true, we are in a shifted window. We need to uh, do a cycle back to get to the original shape of the matrix for sending that to the next block. That is why we need to use cycle back shift here. And cycle back shift, if you remember, we defined that here. Just using cycle shift uh, function, but this time we put the positive value for the displacement, which is gonna uh, change the uh, matrix to the, its original shape. Okay. And at the end, we just uh, return output as the output of the class. So this was our um, window attention class that we needed to create. And if you go and look at our swing block we have this uh, window attention and now we can actually run the code and try to get some outputs for running the code i'm just going to add this uh, code here and you can see that i'm going to use this uh, swing t uh, function and uh, hidden dimension is going to be 96 layers are going to be 2 2 6 2 and it's the number of layers in each stage uh, heads is going to be 3, 6, 12, 24. Channels are going to be 3. That is the channels of uh, inputs, uh, which is the RGB. For this example, let's say number of classes are 3. Uh, for example, we can change this to 1000 for MHNet. And head dimension is 32. Window size is 7. Down scaling factors is 4, 2, 2, 2. And this relative positional embedding will create that later. And let's say we have a dummy image and we are going to put that in our network and uh, print out the output. You can see uh, code works.